Hey there and welcome back to the channel. My name is Janosch and today I want to show you eight advanced Calendly features that allow you to schedule your meetings more efficiently. Let's get started right away. One of the most powerful things that you can do is to automate the process and the tasks around your Calendly meetings. And what I mean by that is that you can, for example, send out automated emails before your, your events that remind your invitees you know, that the event is coming up or you can send out automated emails after the event to kind of ask for feedback and ask your, your invitee how the meeting went for them, how the call went for them. You can send out like a short survey that they can answer. Also, you can kind of process the data from Calendly and send it to some different tool. For example, if you do handle lead uh, calls with Calendly, you can send the data that they enter into the Calendly invitation to your CRM, for example. And all these things are really, really, really powerful. And you can do this in two ways. First of all, you can use Calendly workflows. This is a feature that's built into Calendly and it allows you to set up these processes that kind of automate the work around your Calendly meetings. This is part of the um, pro plan or like the, um, it's one more than the basic pro plan. Uh, I don't know what the plan is called. Um, but you will have to upgrade to that plan in order to be able to use these features. But what I actually prefer doing is I prefer using Zapier to uh, create these automations uh, because it allows you to, to um, yeah, just be more flexible with uh, the automations that you create. For example, I have this automation set up for what's called the coaching feedback flow. So after I have a coaching call with one of my coaching clients, I send out this email that kind of, uh, you know, asks them how the meeting went for them and uh, that kind of asks them to fill out a short form so that I can get feedback to improve my coaching calls. So I would recommend going with Zapier because it's just the more powerful option and if you need help with that I can uh, recommend you my coaching service uh, where I help you to kind of plan build and um, also maintain uh, these automations around your software tools the second powerful feature you can use in Calendly is to set the location for the meeting event and what that does is that it will automatically create a meeting link for you and the invitee so you don't have to send that out um, manually again. So for example, if I set this to Google Meet, uh, then the invitee will actually get a link to that Google Meet event in advance to the meeting and uh, then they can just click on it and join the event and you don't have to send that manually. Uh, really simple uh, but also really effective because it just saves you a couple of minutes of manual work uh, that you don't have to do anymore. Another powerful feature is to customize the event availability that you have inside of your Calendly meetings because this allows you to be really precise on how and when you want to take certain meetings. For example, you can add a bit of buffer before and after your events uh, as shown right here. So you see it in the animation over here. Um, if you add that, uh, then you will have um, the uh, specified amount of buffer before and after each event. So you can kind of, um, you know, uh, get some rest, drink, uh, drink something or get a coffee or so, um, if that's something that you want to do. And also in the additional rules for availability, there are other um, kind of important settings that you can set uh, to really customize how these events work for you. For example, you can select how the start time increments work. For example, if you set it to five minutes, then the increments will be shown up as, you know, like 2 p.m., uh, 205, 210, 215, uh, 220, uh, and so on. And if you set it to uh, 30 minutes, for example, then the only start times available will be uh, 2 p.m., 2.30, uh, 3 p.m., and so on. Also, you can control when the invitee can schedule a certain event. And that's something that I really make sure to always set up for my Calendly um, booking types or event types, because I don't want people to be able to book a meeting for me that's in like, one hour because usually you know I want some time uh, to kind of prepare for the meeting and um, if I have a meeting in like an hour and I don't know it um, because I'm in a different meeting for example um, then it just gets really confusing so usually what I do is I set it to one day in advance which means that invitees can only schedule the meeting um, for the next day uh, so that gives me plenty of time to prepare but you can also set it to you know uh, just like one hour or like let's say two hours so if it's like 2 p.m then the earliest time that people can book you for would be 4 p.m and then also you can set up how many times you want the uh, event to be 
uh, allowed per day. So if it's really work intensive and really um, you know draining type of meeting that you have here, um, then maybe you want to set this to one. Uh, and if it's like a, a introductory call for a, like a sales type of call, um, then maybe uh, it's not that important that you only have one. Maybe you can have you know 12 of those per day. If it's like a 50 minute introductory call. And uh, yeah, these are like these all these options for setting up your availability that are really powerful in my opinion. Next up, we also have the option to make the event a secret event which means that it will not be shown up on the main page of or like on the main scheduling page of Calendly and this is really nice for events that you want to you know make uh, private for example if it's like a coaching call that not everybody should be able to book um, maybe only people should be able to book it that have already paid for your coaching then uh, it's great to make this a secret event and uh, then you can just uh, like you share the event by sending out the link to the person individually so for example if uh, you know this this event is like my uh, 60 minute call uh, if i were to kind of uh, make this a secret event then it would not be shown up on my what is it on my yeah on my calendly uh, page here anymore and if you take a look at my calendly i have like these seven event types and if you see this little icon next to it uh, then it means that it's not being shown uh, on the main page so you see I have like five different uh, types of events that are actually not showing up here at my uh, booking page. Again, really simple and really nice feature. Another nice touch is to provide a welcome message to the people on your booking page uh, because that allows you to kind of introduce yourself and to tell them how the booking process uh, goes down. So this can be done in the account. You can go to account settings. And then in here, you can provide the welcome message. Now I just have the de default message, but you could say, you know, um, first, um, you know, choose a time that works for you. Uh, like this. And then second, and third, and so on. Oh, that's fourth. Uh, third and so on and you can kind of give instructions to people how they can book a meeting and also you can say something about yourself if uh, people don't know you before they book this event or generally book a meeting with you on your booking page so and again really nice touch really small thing but it can really you know make a much better impression than just leaving it blank what's also great is that you can add custom links to your confirmation page for example if somebody books an event with you um, or books some kind of meeting with you then you can display links Links on your confirmation page, for example, to send them back to your homepage uh, or to send them to uh, some sort of payment page, your YouTube channel or, or so on. And this is really easy to set up by going to the confirmation page settings in your event type and then clicking on add custom link. And uh, then you can just add the name of your link. So this would be uh, back to the website and then you can input your website right here. So this is my website and uh, I could just add that and then it would show up uh, as a link on the confirmation page. Next up is a quick way to make yourself unavailable if you're on vacation because uh, usually you wouldn't want to be available for calls uh, when you are on vacation. So that can be done in the availability um, kind of tab over here. And what you can do is you can add a date override. So that basically says on this specific date, I will not be available um, based on my usual schedule, but I will be available based on a different schedule. For example, let's say that on the 20th, uh, 24th, uh, I will not be available at all. So uh, if I apply, apply that, then for the 24th of October, um, there will be no scheduling available for, for me, for all my different events. And um, this allows me to quickly, you know, um, kind of make myself unavailable. Now you can also choose multiple dates. So for example, if I just let's select all of these, then um, it will make myself, myself unavailable for uh, all of these different days um, in this date range. I don't want to do this right now, but uh, just so you know that it works. And last up is a really nice feature that I really like as well, which is to create one-off meetings using the Calendly Chrome extension. And this is really helpful, if, for example, if you don't want somebody to be able to choose the time when they can book you, but you actually want to specify uh, maybe two to three times when you would be available for this type of call, and uh, then you can, uh, you know, let the person choose uh, the time out of these different options that you give them. And also this makes it possible for you to create a, like an event that isn't available for others to see and uh, that isn't available forever. So let's check out how this works. Um, you can just click on the Calendly Chrome extension if you've got that installed in your uh, Chrome browser and then click on create. Now we'll click on the one-off meeting button 
and then this little window pops up that lets us create this event. Now we can choose the duration we want this to be. Um, so let's say we want it to be one hour long and then we can add in these time slots where we want them to be. So let's say I might want the person that gets the link later to this event uh, be able to book it at uh, this time and maybe at this time and also maybe at this time. So we've got three different time slots that they can book, um, but they couldn't uh, book any of the other time slots for this uh, meeting event. So now let's click on next. And now we have uh, the summary. So we have these three different times. It's 60 minutes long. It's a one-off meeting. Um, we can add a location. Let's go for Google Meet. And um, we can also add details like an agenda uh, if we wanted to, but that's not uh, too relevant for us. And also we can say that we want to reserve the times so we can put a placeholder on our event, um, on our calendar until the uh, invitee has booked one of the three times that we kind of offered them. Because otherwise maybe somebody else books an event with us in these time slots and then it would kind of, um, yeah, just make the purpose obsolete. So we can say we want to reserve these times and then click on publish meeting. And now we do have this meeting link available. We can just copy the link and send this out to uh, the person that we want to schedule this event with. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it uh, this time without a camera because uh, the camera battery has failed me and has just, um, yeah, gone empty, so that's why there's no camera, but uh, I still hope that you enjoyed the video and uh, I'll see you next time. Take care.